In my life, I've dreamed about a lot of gear, including a lot of amps. When I was 16, I just wanted a Marshall half stack. As time has gone on, I fantasized about a Fender Deluxe Reverb and some kind of vintage orange thing and a Mesa thing. And I can assure you that at no point did I lie awake thinking what I really need is something that looks a little like a tube radio. It's only two watts and has two knobs, neither of which work quite the way you expect them to work. But that's actually how I would characterize one of my all time favorite amplifiers. The Fender Greta. The Greta is a strange little amp. It's a two watt tube amplifier with a volume control and a tone control, a little VU meter that honestly is basically useless, and a built in four inch speaker. Have you ever heard of a four inch guitar speaker? No, that's because people don't make them. This has gotta be some sort of like hi-fi system type speaker, though I wouldn't describe it as hi-fi under any circumstances. Fortunately, it's also got a line out in the back and a speaker jack in the back so you can connect to an external cab, which is how I played it the very first time I plugged in at a guitar store and how I play it most of the time today. I bought one of these new in 2013 and loved it for a while until I started dreaming about the next amp. And so I sold it for money to put towards that amp and I almost immediately regretted it. So, um, fortunately I've got one back in the collection. And today I'm going to show you a little bit of what this amp does in the context of teaching you two lessons that this amp taught me. Neither of them is like earth shattering, but both I think are really important and can help you sort of guide gear related decisions that you might want to make in the future. But before I do that, I got to do one other thing, which is show you the range of sounds that are available in this thing, just using the volume knob. I'm not going to mess with the tone. I've got that where I like it. I'm running through a 15 inch speaker via the speaker out on the back. This is with the volume like barely on. Sounds clean, right? Though you can already start to hear a little bit of grit and uh, let's see. I'm getting, looks like 87 decibels as I play it right now. Let's crank it and see what we get. Oh yes, 103 decibels of just beautiful tube dirt produced by a two watt amplifier. Pretty incredible. Anyway, on to the lessons. Lesson number one, speakers matter. Let's compare two sounds. I'm gonna start by playing something through the Greta as it's run through this 15 inch speaker, and then I'm gonna unplug the speaker and you're gonna hear the same sound, the same settings at least, come through this tiny little four inch speaker. <laughs> So obviously there were some big differences when I changed speaker size. Again, you, you saw me, I didn't touch these knobs at all. I observed personally three significant changes. The first was a big change in volume. The volume that was coming out of this big speaker was, I actually have a VU meter here to track it. It was like 95, 96 dB, and that's on a very low setting on the volume knob, which is, you know, pretty loud. And then when I unplugged it, the volume dropped to like 83 or 84 dB. That is a huge change. Remember the decibels are measured like on a logarithmic scale. So 95-ish to 85-ish is a really significant change in sound. In fact, it got so low in volume coming out of the small speaker that as I play, it's only a little bit louder than the sound of this unplugged electric guitar, which as most of you probably know is not very loud. The second change is the range of frequencies that are produced by the amp through the speaker. The bigger speaker reproduces a much wider range of frequencies than the small speaker. People talk often about the amount of low end that comes through as you increase the diameter of your speaker, but I didn't notice just more low end. I also noticed more, maybe like a different sounding high end. It just sounds fuller at all places in the frequency spectrum. And, you know, depending on application, that can be really nice. By contrast, running through the small speaker, it's almost like there's no low end whatsoever. Um, the, the lowest sound that I'm getting 
it's really like a, a mid sound. It doesn't have anything that would ever like compete with a bass guitar or a kick drum. Um, and then the highest sounds, it's kind of hard to tell because they're, they're honestly so distorted. Um, but it doesn't seem to have the kind of like air or sparkle or whatever your favorite buzzword is for like a reasonably high frequency trebly sound. It doesn't really have those either. It's just sort of mids. And the third observation is flavor of distortion. So um, let me start by plugging back into the big speaker and dialing in a slightly more distorted tone. <laughs> So through the big speaker, that to me sounds just like the ideal tube amp distortion. That's why I love this amp so much. It is like my dream version of that sound. Um, let's compare that to what we get when I unplug the external speaker. The distortion that comes from that is completely different in character, and I think it's, again, because of the speaker. This 15-inch speaker, I think, has like a wattage rating of, it's well over 100 watts. I, I don't know what the rating or, you know, recommendation is for this little 4-inch, but if this amp creates enough volume, enough power to drive, like, upwards of 100 decibels out of a 15-inch speaker, so that's, a, that's a lot of sound. That same quantity of power running through this 4-inch... Yeah, not gonna make the four inch very happy. So the distortion sound that you get through this little speaker, it's not just your typical tube saturation sound. It's like that plus the sound of a speaker that is on the verge of imploding. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, this is one of the other like secret things that I love about this amp is that it's got such a strong flavor when it's distorted that it's great for like recording applications and for inspiring you to play different sorts of things, but I guess that's beside the point. The point is that the size of speaker that you have and the amount of power that it can handle can really affect the type of distortion that's created when you are playing through it loud. This is an extreme comparison, you know, four inches versus 15 inches, but it gives you an idea of the kinds of things that will change as you start to change the size and other variables in the speaker that you're using. And the moral, I guess, is that speakers matter. And if you want to affect the sound that you're producing from your traditional electric guitar rig, people always focus first on, oh, do I need to change my guitar, change my amp, get new pedals? Well, also, you need to be thinking about speakers with the same amount of focus that you think about those other pieces of gear. Lesson number two is a little bit more abstract. On my, on my notes here, I called it a bird in the hand, but honestly, that um, figure of speech doesn't really apply here. Um, I bought this amp because I played it in a guitar store, plugged into an external cab, and absolutely loved the sound. As I said before, it was like my ideal tube amp sound. I had looked for that in other amps and never been able to find it. And the fact that I found it in this funny little novel amp that was pretty reasonably priced, it was new at the time, I... I just took the plunge and I took it home and I really loved this amp for a long time. But with time, this perfectionistic voice in my head, the optimizing voice, it started to speak louder and louder and it kept telling me the same thing. You can't get the sounds that you need from this amplifier. It's too strange. Its feature set is too limited. It's too watts. The volume control is just like a distortion control in practice. And the tone knob doesn't give you tone sculpting. It's just like bright versus super dark. That's not a very useful range. What you really need is an amp with more controls and maybe more power so that you can get a wider variety of tones. And those tones are what are going to turn you into like guitar Yoda or something. So I sold the Greta and bought an amp with more controls and with more versatility. And um, I pretty quickly regretted that decision. And here's why. Because the Greta may only have basically two sounds. Chiming clean sound, which I love, and overdriven sound, which I love. But the point is that I love both of those sounds. They gel perfectly with the sounds that I hear in my head. They give me exactly the kinds of sounds that I, in practice, want to return to again and again. And when I replace them with like a wider array of sounds, I just found that none of those sounds made me feel as good about the music I was making or excited me as much as these two, the two sounds that are available in this little amp. And the fact is that a bunch of new sounds aren't worth very much to you if you don't like them or if you like them and don't actually use them. And that's 
sort of what I found. I had given myself access to a bunch of things that didn't inspire me, and I actually played guitar a lot less after selling this amp than I did when I had it in my possession. The point here is that if you like the sounds that you have at your disposal, love those sounds, keep those sounds, use those sounds. Don't uh, toss them aside because you can imagine what it might be like if you have a new sound that you might love. Don't, don't take for granted the things that you know that you do love. Otherwise, you might end up like me, selling a funny little amp and then spending a few years regretting it and a few more years looking for a version that was priced in such a way that you could forgive yourself for having to buy it a second time. And that's it. If you like this, please like it. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you want more stuff that's like this. And in the comments, let me know if there's a piece of gear that you've played through that you know other people might not like, but that you really, really like. I, I, of course, because I'm thinking about the Greta, I'm interested in gear that has like a distinctive voice or limited features. But really, if there's anything that you feel like uh, maybe doesn't fit the rules of what you're supposed to like and play, but you still loved it, that's kind of what I want to hear about. As always, I really appreciate your time, and I'll see you around. <laughs>